This video covers Substance Painter bridge functionality. We start by exporting our asset from Character Creator. I'll briefly explain how UDIMs work, then we'll export out our high res out of ZBrush, bake everything together in Substance Painter, texture it up, send it all back to Character Creator, and again, all of this is just happening with a few button presses. We'll also touch on expression wrinkles and facial animation, which are topics that we're gonna dive much deeper into in upcoming videos. Now, the very first thing we need to do for the Substance Painter process is go into C Users, Your Username, Documents, Adobe, Adobe Substance 3D Painter, Assets, Export Dash Presets, and in there, you can put the Character Creator Preset SPEXP file uh, into this folder. So that way, Substance Painter will have this export preset available to us that we can use to export our textures from Substance Painter. And again, a link will be in the description for that file. So now we have our character all synced up from our last videos. We got a detailed character in ZBrush. So if I go over here and again, we have, here's our subdivision level one, which is in character creator. But in here, if I go up to subdivision level six, not only do we have a lot of detail on our character, we also have a poly paint that we're gonna use as a base. I transferred this poly paint from skin data, uh, uh, scan data, you don't have to do that. You can go in here to say uh, your standard brush, switch from Z add to RGB. Uh, you can keep the spray stroke if you want, or you switch it to dot stroke. We can hit uh, C to sample and you can choose, you know, whatever color you want to go in here and you can like kind of spray on color or you can switch to no alpha. You can drop your RGB intensity down. And in fact, uh, underneath your brush menu, if you don't have this brush menu docked, you have this little double divider, just double click that to open it up. Take your brush menu, grab the little white dot and drag it over here. Uh, if we go down here to alpha and texture, you're gonna see there's a poly paint mode. So again, with our standard brush with RGB turned on, but Ziad turned off, you can poly paint. If you hover over this, you can switch it to colorize, multiply, lighten, darken, you know, so you have some options in here to poly paint with. So again, if you wanna just do some color breakup or if you wanna fill this object, go in here, you know, choose a dark green, say color, fill object, you can start with that. Of course, it didn't fill it completely because I have an RGB intensity at 28. If we undo that by control Z and then go up to 100, you can say color fill object. You can start with this and then just start painting uh, your character. Uh, poly paint in ZBrush is vertex color. So if you go down to subdivision level one and start painting, you know, we'll grab something obvious like orange and we start painting on this object, it's gonna appear very low res. Of course, the more polygons we have, the higher resolution the texture will appear. And when we're up to subdivision level six, we're at 13.7 million points. So we can get a very, very detailed poly paint in here. Of course, again, I transferred my color information from scan data. So it already has a detailed poly paint. And another cool thing we can do. So this is vertex color in ZBrush, which is called poly paint. If we go down in the tool menu to the poly paint menu, you're gonna see in here, we have an adjust colors option. So if you've already poly painted your character and you just wanna make some minor adjustments, you hop into this adjust colors button, go ahead and hit frame so we can see our character. And you can go through here, you can hue shift over here. So if you wanna make them more green or more purple, you can do that. You can change the saturation over here. You can change the RGB contrast if you want, all sorts of color adjustment options you can have down here at the bottom, as well as if you go and drag from this color option over to your character, it will actually mask uh, by that color and you can change the tolerance level. So you can mask out certain areas of your poly paint that you don't uh, maybe want to adjust. Anyway, I'm not gonna do any of that for this. We will end up doing this for our face tools walkthrough when we do, maybe we'll do another vampire or something, or we might just modify this guy, who knows, but we'll go ahead and cancel out of that. We're just going to send this poly paint to Substance Painter to bake from. And again, I don't wanna bloat this particular series, but I will have links in the description to other live streams I've done that goes more in depth in detailing characters, brushes, poly painting, masking by cavity, all sorts of fun options. Well, before we do that, we need to export our low res. So let's hop back into Character Creator. And right here in that top menu bar, there's a Substance Painter option. So with our CC Base Plus selected, hit that Substance Painter button and choose Export Character to Substance Painter. Uh, I'm gonna stick with my current 
organization and we're going to store this on our desktop. However, I am going to put this in a folder because we're going to have multiple folders inside of this folder. So I'm going to right click, say new folder. We'll call this Goblin Demo Substance and we'll give it a file name. We'll call it Goblin Demo Body and you're going to notice it's exporting this as an OBJ file. So go ahead and hit save. And let's take a look at what that gave us. So I'm going to navigate to my desktop here, to the Goblin Demo Substance folder. And you're going to see we have an OBJ in here, and we have a material file that is associated with this OBJ file. Inside of this is a Goblin Demo Body folder, and in here we have a bunch of folders in here. This is where the upper teeth textures are from uh, Character Creator. So all of the Character Creator files, again, if we click over here in the material, all of these files that are plugged into our character will end up here, including, if we go back one directory, uh, the eyes, eyes left and right are in here. Uh, the skin head is going to get a little bit complicated, but bear with me, it's actually pretty simple. Inside of the skin head folder is actually the entire body, plus the nails, plus the eyelashes. So remember when we were saying, hey, we're going to split off the tear ducts and the eyelashes into their own um, object? Well, in this system right here, the eyelashes are part of the body. It's actually part of their UDIM, UDIM 06, and you can see that here in the name 006. This is going to make more sense. Bear with me. It's not as complicated as it looks. So basically, all of the textures from Character Creator, it exported them for you in these nice organized folders. At this point, if you want to hop in here and change any of them in Photoshop, you can. It's simply texture files sitting in folders. That's the only magic happening here. It's not scary. Now, let's talk a little bit about UDIMs briefly. I'm going to go in here to File Import to our desktop. And I'm going to open up that Goblin Demo Body.obj file. And in here, you see we have an object in here, and we have a base body, eye, teeth, and tongue. This is what Character Creator exported out. I'm going to hop into my Hypershade, and I'm also going to open up my Window UV Editor. So now, with nothing selected, I can right-click in here, and you're going to see this is the uh, standard cornea. So if I right-click and say Select Objects with Materials, that's selecting the base eye, and you're going to see the base eye is in this very first quadrant. This is the 0 to 1 main quadrant. And in UDIM terms, this quadrant right here is called 1001. If we go over one quadrant, that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So again, going through here, these are just assigned to eyeballs, and all of the eyeball stuff is just in that first quadrant, 1001. Here's the lower teeth, again has its own material assigned to the base teeth, and it's only in that first quadrant. However, when we get to the standard skin head, so I'm going to right-click this material and say Select Objects with Material, all of a sudden you're going to see, okay, the head is in the first quadrant, but the chest is in the second one, arms, legs, nails, and eyelashes. And remember, 1001, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are UDIMs. This object has one material assigned, but is UV'd in such a way that the head is in UDIM 1, the chest is in UDIM 2, etc. So even though one material is assigned, we can have a separate 2048 or 4096 texture assigned to each body part, and in Substance Painter, using this method, we can paint across these UDIMs seamlessly. So we can get very high resolution without having to have like one 8K map. But what I want you to stick in your brain is, each one of these is its own UDIM and what number they are. And this will make more sense when we're in Substance Painter. But I just wanted to show you how that's set up. If you want to set up your own UDIMs, it's the exact same thing. Create a character, put its UVs in different quadrants. In fact, if you want to move them, you can go in here to Transform, set this value to 1, select the UVs, and then just move them over one space. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you've set your file up as UDIMs. Congratulations, you're a UDIM expert now. So now that you know what UDIMs are, let's hop into Substance Painter. And there's actually one thing I forgot to do. I need to open his mouth. The whole reason I closed it in the last session uh, was to get parity between the files, but I do want to open the mouth so I don't get baking errors on the lips. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to go and grab the character here. I'm going to go into the Motion, Modify Motion tab. Go in here to Edit Facial. Go into, so it'll default to the muscle. Go over here to the Modify tab. Go in here to Jaw. 
And again, keep this value something you'll remember. I think an easy one is 50. So just type in 50, hit enter. That'll open his mouth. We'll go ahead and close that window out. We need to open our ZBrush file. So we'll go ahead and again, select all of these objects. We'll go Z those back to ZBrush. We'll switch to Relink. So again, eyelash and tear duct separated, current pose, go Z. Now our mouth is open. Now we're in good shape. So one more time, Substance Painter, Export Character. We'll just rewrite over this Goblin Demo body. That'll just re-export everything, but have a mouth open version. So now we'll hop into Substance Painter. We're gonna go to File, New. Go in here to File, Select. Go into the Goblin Demo Substance folder. Double click the Goblin Demo Body OBJ. And remember, we're using the UV tile workflow. So go ahead and check this on. Document resolution is at 2048 is fine. Go ahead and hit OK. This is gonna load up our base body with the mouth open and we can start baking the file and texturing it. And there it is. Uh, let's, again, we just talked about UDIM, so let's continue that talk. I'm gonna take this, here's our layer and texture tabs. I'm gonna drag this down a little bit so we can see our texture sets. Now again, in the UD, in the UDIM workflow and the way the file is set up, we have our cornea here, that's our eye color. I'm gonna go ahead and make these arrows minimized. I don't need to, you know, waste a bunch of space in here. When we get to the head, you're gonna see there's our UDIMs. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, I don't necessarily need to see them in this view, so I'll go ahead and shrink that down. So if you wanna paint on anything in particular, say you wanna paint on the right eye, go in here to the standard cornea and select it. Or if you wanna paint on, say, the tongue, control alt and then right click on the tongue, that'll go ahead and select that texture set. All we're going to be doing in this session is uh, painting on the body. So I'm gonna hold down control alt, right click on the body. That's gonna select the standard skin head texture set. And then now that we know that, I'm gonna move this back up. And now we can start you know, painting on our body if you want to. But before we do that, we wanna go ahead and bake our details. Because remember back here in ZBrush, and we're gonna go back here with our body selected, go back up to subdivision level six, so we can see all that glorious detail. And we're gonna export this out. You can update the teeth. You can subdivide them and change their shape and paint on them and all that stuff. I'm actually gonna hold off on that until we get into face tools. There's a much easier way uh, to do that using face tools. So I'm just going to just do the body for now. So I'm gonna hold down shift and turn off the eyeball for the body. And I'm gonna select the body just to turn that eyeball back on. So with just our body showing at the highest subdivision level, our poly paint is on. We're gonna go in here to the export button. We're gonna throw this again on our desktop inside the Goblin Demo Substance folder. We have our Goblin Demo body. We'll call this Goblin Demo body underscore high. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to an FBX, hit save. And I can't move this window, it's off the screen, but I can show you this. Basically, you want, I'm exporting visible, which is just the body we have visible. 2020 is fine, bin is fine. Make sure S normals is checked on. This smooths your normals. Number one, you want to baked off smooth normals in your high res because it'll be nice and smooth if you have slightly lower res geometry, but also it's going to drastically reduce your file size. Uh, so then go ahead and hit OK. And that will export our base body high res geometry with our poly paint, which remember is vertex color. Keep that in mind because that's going to be important back in Substance Painter. Give this a minute. It's 13.7 million points, so it might take a bit to export this. All right, so the file exported. Now we can hop back into Substance Painter. I'm gonna go into Texture Set Settings. We're gonna scroll down until we see Baked Mesh Maps. Go ahead and click that button. And underneath the Texture Set List, remember, we're only baking off the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the corneas, the eyes, the teeth, We'll go ahead and leave the head checked for now and the tongue we'll go ahead and turn off and then the upper teeth. Now, even in the head, we're not gonna bake everything. So remember this 101 is head, 02 is chest, arms, legs, nails, 1006 is eyelashes. I'm not baking anything for my eyelashes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Down here under common settings, go to the material ID. By default, this sets to material color. Choose vertex color. Remember, poly paint and ZBrush is painting on verts. 
that's our poly paint. That's what we're going to bake off for our material ID. In this case, it's not really a material ID. It's just skin texturing, but we can still use that as a base. Go back here to common settings. Uh, output size is 2048. And remember, that's not 2048 for the entire body. It's 2048 for the head, the chest, the legs, the arms, the nails, and the eyelashes. So that's plenty of resolution. Uh, the high definition mesh we need to load up. So go ahead and click that little paper icon and grab the Goblin Demo Body High FBX that we exported. When it's done loading, you'll see a cage show up. You can change that here. You can change the max frontal distance uh, here. You can kind of, I mean, if you have any problems, I think the defaults are probably fine. And in this case, that's all we need to worry about. So go ahead and say bake selected textures. And that's going to bake the high res, the one single high res file we have in ZBrush to all of our different UDIMs for our character. It'll be seamless across the seams, across the UDIM seams. And we can also paint across them in Substance Painter. Once that's done, let's say return to painting mode. And now we got our fully detailed character in here. And again, control alt, right click on the body to select that texture set. We're gonna go in here to layers and we're gonna start painting this guy up. Now remember, we baked off his poly paint as a base layer we can start from. So we're gonna make a new fill layer. It's this little paint bucket icon. And uh, this layer here, we can go ahead and delete the paintbrush one. Uh, on this fill layer, I'm going to right click and say add a fill. So to a fill layer, I'm going to add another fill and you'll see why in just a second. And I'm going to move this properties up just a little bit. And we're going to scroll down and I'm going to put our poly paint right into this base color. In order to find that, go over here underneath search. You can see it's already narrowed down to materials. Go ahead and select that. So now everything in Substance Painter is available for our search. And we're going to say project. So when we type that in, you'll see we got a bunch of files in here and they all have the number five next to them. If you had baked out to another material, like you baked a custom tongue texture, it would also be in here, but it'd have a big old one on it because that's its own material with only one UDIM. This is indicating to you that it actually baked out to five UDIMs. Remember, you know, we actually have six, but we didn't bake to that last one. So when I drag this color over here, it's not going to drag just the head color onto my object. It's going to drag all five of my textures onto each of their respective UDIMs. And again, I'm going to take this texture and drag it right onto the base color. So that's going to provide my base color here. And we'll go ahead and name this layer Base Human. Now, if I'm going to make a green goblin uh, type of guy, but I want to use this skin as a base to start from, what I can do is right on top of this fill, I'm gonna right click this and say, add a filter. Now, I'm not gonna go pure green just yet, but what I am gonna do is underneath this filter button, go ahead and choose that. Scroll down a little bit until you see HSL. This is hue, saturation, and lightness. So I'm gonna just kinda, I'm just gonna push this slightly over into the greens a little bit, maybe desaturate it and maybe turn down that lightness just a tiny bit. And this is gonna be kind of my base human-ish texture. With this base human, I'm going to control D to duplicate this, and we'll call this Goblin Skin. Now on this one, on the HSL, I'm going to really crank this over to a green color, maybe even saturate it more. We'll darken it just a bit. And again, we're using that base poly paint as a starting point for our skin. So now on this Goblin Skin, I can right click it. I can say add a white mask. And on that white mask, I can right click that and say add a paint layer. And then with this paint layer active, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna click this X so we're not searching for project anymore. I'm gonna choose the brush icon. Let's type in dirt. I'm gonna choose dirt 02 or dirt two. I'm gonna right click in my viewport here and I'm gonna turn on flow and I'm gonna turn that down quite a bit. So now if I go in here and paint on my object, with a black color. If it's not black, just tap X on your keyboard. That'll switch between black and white. And you can see I can start painting out certain areas. So now I can kind of mix a little bit of goblin skin with a little bit of human skin and just kind of pick some areas where it might make sense to kind of have a little bit of skin breakup, skin color breakup. And that's basically it. Go through this file and paint him up and make him look as beautiful as you want. And if you want to do this in symmetry, you can go up here. There's a symmetry button, so you can turn that on. If you go into settings here, you can like show a symmetry plane. You can turn off or on the intersection if it bugs you. 
but you can basically have symmetry on while you're painting in Substance Painter, as long as that's active. So again, save yourself some time and turn on symmetry if it makes sense. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, if you wanna bring these other textures in, remember, you can bring in the character creator skin textures into Substance Painter if you want. Or like, I, like we were talking about earlier, the tongue. If you wanna bring these ton te tongue textures in, we can certainly do that. Again, it's uh, 1001 is the UDIM it uses, and it only uses one because it has its own material. So we'll just go ahead and grab all these. Uh, well, we'll do the diffuse, metallic, well, metallic's just black, normal and roughness. We'll drag in diffuse, normal and roughness right in here, uh, just into this box over here in the library. And we'll select this one, shift select down to all of them are selected, change undefined to texture. We'll bring it into our untitled project. We'll just say import. And now I'm gonna control alt tap on the tongue to select that texture set. I'm gonna go in here to a fill layer. And again, with this fill layer, I can just drag and drop the base color, the normal, and the roughness right on the tongue. And now that has been updated with the character creator materials. And again, if you control alt click on the body, you'll go back to the body here. And let's do one more because this one's a little bit more complicated. Not really though. So we're gonna go back up one directory. Uh, let's go back to the standard skin head. And remember the eyelashes in the character creator topology is built into the base body topology. And it's in the UDIM 06. So here's, you know, one through five, and then here's six. So standard skin head 06 is actually eyelash textures. Um, I don't need the AO. I can bring in the diffuse, the normal, and the opacity. Uh, roughness is just white. We can remember that. Uh, I'm going to drag these into my project here. And once again, we're going to select the top one, shift select the bottom, switch this to texture, bring it into our un untitled project, hit import. And feel free to save the project so it's not untitled at any point. So here's my eyelash texture. So again, control alt, right click on the body. Let's go ahead and do another fill layer here. And let's go ahead and start plugging these in. So this is the diffuse. So we're going to drag that into our base color. This is our normal. So we'll scroll down a little bit and we'll drop this into the normal. And this is our opacity. Well, unfortunately, I don't have an opacity layer. I have color, metal, roughness, normal, and height. Hmm. So what I can do is I can go back to my texture set settings. And if I scroll up a little bit, you see I have a channel section. If I click plus, uh, you can look through here and there's not an opacity option. There is an opacity option under unsupported by shader. So I can technically add an opacity channel that I can use, but the shader's not gonna support it. Let's go find a shader that will. So up here on the far right hand side, you're gonna see there's a shader settings. Go ahead and click that and change ASM metal rough to PBR metal rough with alpha blending. So we're gonna swap our shader out. And now when we go back to our channels and click the plus sign, we got an opacity right there. Go ahead and choose that. Go back to our layers. And then on this fill layer, scroll down and you can turn on opacity. So now we have an opacity slot. Let's drop this eyelash opacity right in there. And now we have our um, invisible Sasquatch. <laughs> Not really what we're looking for. Easy fix though. So let's go ahead and double click this and we'll name this eyelashes. And right over here, you'll see a little dotted box. Go ahead and choose that. And that's gonna take you to a UDIM section. And you're gonna see right now, this eyelashes is assigned to every UDIM on this character. I only want it for 1006. Go ahead and uncheck 1001, two, three, four, and five, and just leave 1006 checked on. And then you'll see you just have one UDIM assigned to this layer. Go ahead and check or click on the layer again. And now you see eyelashes with opacity and color and normal map is just assigned to that geometry. And it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but you can see here's my opacity driven eyelashes on my character. So again, feel free to do this with your eyes and your teeth or whatever else you wanna do. And also feel free to go ahead and texture this character. I've already done it. I don't think you need to sit here watching me texture a character. So I'm gonna, again, it's not a Substance Painter texturing course. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in Goblin. And I'm gonna narrow this, you can even narrow it down to Smart Materials. So I have a Goblin body already done. This is from the previously painted uh, object here. So again, with Control Alt, right clicking the body, I can grab this Smart Material and just drag it over. I'll just put it on the top here. 
And smart materials are super easy to create. I'll show you the how-to in just a second. But basically, from my previous file, I've just textured my entire character here. And everything is currently underneath this goblin body uh, folder. I'm going to go ahead and grab all the folders in goblin body and just drag it out of goblin body. And then this empty goblin body folder I don't need, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Let's move eyelashes to the top. And our base human and goblin skin that we made, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Because we've already got that uh, set up in here. So let me just walk you through what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything. We'll start here in the skin. So here's my base human-ish skin, and we already talked about this, fill, HSL, and then on top of this we have our overlay, and again, this has our paint. If you alt-tap any mask, it'll show you where I painted, and then you can hit M on your keyboard to go back to material. In fact, any of these, you can go here, you can turn on roughness, you can turn on, uh, I mean, I guess I just have base color on this uh, layer, but, and again, hit M to go back to material. I put on a little bit of a color breakup. This is just, instead of doing a fill layer, you can do a paint layer or add layer. Uh, and you can literally just go in and paint with any sort, any base color or roughness. You can paint with a paintbrush and just kind of break up your object however you'd like. And that's basically it for his base skin. Uh, I do have a roughness base here that has kind of just streaky, kind of a sweaty, glistening layer on top of him. Uh, underneath the wound section here, if I turn this on, we have a deep wound that is a uh, kind of a shiny red fill layer. And then over here, just a paint layer assigned to a black material. In fact, we can go ahead and show this. Let me head right click and say, well, we'll just duplicate this layer for now. And I'm going to right click the mask and say, remove mask. So here is my wound material. If you want to make your own, basically you just go in here and you choose your base material, maybe a nice dark red. Um, you can make it metallic or not. Maybe, you know what, maybe a little metallic isn't too bad. Uh, roughness, you can make it super rough and matte or just keep dragging it to the left until it gets super shiny. Uh, height, we don't need to add any more height to our wound, although I guess you can. We'll, we'll actually try that in just a second. Uh, next thing we need to do is right click this and say add a black mask. And then on that black mask, there's a couple things you can do in here. If you wanted to, I don't know, add blood material wherever dirt goes, you can say add a generator. And then in this generator, you could say dirt. And then that will use, you know, ambient occlusion and curvature maps to put this wound section inside of his dirt level. So you can actually drag the slider and that'll just drive out, you know, drive in where this material ends up showing up. And of course, it's non-destructive. So you can go back to the material at any point and say, hey, you know, I want it more rough here. Or I can go back up to the color and say, you know what? I don't want blood. I want more of a dirt kind of look. And you can kind of just dial in dirt for this uh, material here. But we'll switch that back. We don't need a dirt generator on here, so just X that out and then right click and just add a paint layer. On this paint layer, we'll X out Goblin. We'll go back to our brush. We'll just grab Basic Hard. We'll turn off Symmetry. And then essentially I just went in here and painted where this wound layer was going to show up. And again, you can right click in here and turn on flow and turn the flow down a little bit so you can use, well, when I say turn on flow, I mean turn on tablet pressure for flow and then turn this down. So you can go through here and you can kind of finesse in where the scratches go. And that's the basics of, you know, just making a layer with a mask, I suppose. So we'll turn this back on. You can see that's where I basically painted in his deep wounds. And then over here, I have a wounds breakup where I just kind of enhanced them, you know, and scar, you know, scar tissue and stuff. Just gave it a little bit of extra oomph, little bruising in there. I'm gonna jump in here because I never really, I said I was going to show you height and never actually showed it. So all I mean by that is if you're going through here, we're on the deep wound alpha painting. We can go through here and we can paint in a deep wound, but it's kind of just laying on the surface of the skin. This is all sculpted into my ZBrush file, so that got a nice height baked in. But let's say you wanted to add some more scratches, but there's no, that's not digging into the skin. All you gotta do is go back to the material. Uh, you have a height channel available, so just go down here, take this height, and then just 
scrub this backwards and it'll start digging into the skin. Or if you want to do the opposite and have it raised from the skin, kind of a scarification, you can do that. So again, just go in here and just kind of nudge that height backwards. And then as you paint with this layer, it'll dig into the model without having to go back all the way to the ZBrush model. Keep scrolling up. Uh, here's just basic color breakup, you know, just some different zones of the skin, a little modeling, uh, going in here and painting a little blue on the veins. Of course, you could always poly paint that in ZBrush. You don't have to do it in here, but you know, whatever's easier or makes the most sense for your workflow. Uh, in here, I have a paint section that I didn't actually end up using, but you can see in here I have a soot layer that's basically just a matte black kind of dusted on him and then a white paint layer. So on here, I have a paint layer. I can choose that to paint on. So for example, with the basic hard brush selected, I can go into my alphas, search for paint. And in here, you see we got some you know handprints in here, so I can put a big old handprint. Uh, just choose the handprint, scale it up. You can use control and left click to rotate, control and right click to scale, and you can just left click and plop a big old handprint on him. Of course, again, this isn't a substance painter class. Uh, there's a lot of functionality and fun you can have in here. Uh, we can put a little paint splash across him as well. Do all the cool fun stuff you wanna do to make this character your own. And in fact, again, just because we're kind of tired of goblins, let's go down here to our skin. And I'm gonna drag this HSL perspective and I'm gonna see if there's anything that kind of jumps out at me as something I wanna explore. Yeah, I kind of like this kind of sickly humanoid one. So we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll switch him from a goblin to kind of a maybe kind of ruddy human. And then we'll go to the humanish here and we'll kind of change his base a little more. Ooh, or do I like blue? <laughs> Actually kind of like kind of a reddish color. Yeah, that's fine. It did just something a little bit different to look at. One more thing I said I was going to cover and didn't. Uh, if I want to make a smart material, I've changed the skin and I've gone through and I made a bunch of layers and I want to say apply this to another goblin variant or a completely different character using these layers. All I got to do is hold down shift, grab all of these layers, hit control G to put these all in a folder. Double click the folder, name it. We'll call it goblin variant. Right click this and say create smart material. That's going to write all of these layers to a smart material, which is grabbable over here. So if I go through here and delete all of these layers out of my scene, I have a smart material with, that's just basically a bunch of layers with a bunch of folders with a bunch of parameters that I can now drag onto my you know, body here and it will go through and you know, look at your color material IDs or look at your uh, base textures and plug those in for you. And then again, just retexture the entire object based on the smart material parameters that you had stored in those folders. Now, in this case, again, these eyelashes are going to all the UDIM, so we gotta go back in here, turn eyelashes off for everything but 106. But once we've done that, now we're right back where we started with our, uh, again, our smart material. If you want to get rid of this top node, select, again, we've done this before, select all the objects in here, shift select, drag it out above the goblin variant folder, and then just scroll down, grab the goblin variant folder and delete it out of your stack. So if you're happy with your poly paint, let's go ahead and export these out of Character Creator. Now, before I do it, let's explain what's gonna happen. It's going to export these textures and it's gonna put them right here in this folder. Now there's a chance, like right here, you can see these are JPEGs. Let's say, you know what, I like PNGs more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the one through five, again, I'm not gonna bother updating the eyelashes, those are fine, but one through five, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of this folder. And then in here, I'm gonna export my textures and it's going to fill those back in with whatever file format I want. And then Character Creator won't be confused if there's a JPEG and a PNG sitting in there, it'll only select the image files that I put in there. So that's just a way to kind of clear things out and uh, avoid confusion if you're changing file formats. So in here into file, export textures. Once again, we're not exporting everything. So go ahead and turn off your cornea and your eyes and your lower teeth and your tongue and your upper teeth. Uh, and in fact, select the skin head, scroll down and uncheck 1006. We'll just leave our eyelashes alone for now. Back here under global settings, your output directory is going to be on your desktop. Go into the Goblin Demo Substance folder. 
And if you double click this folder and you see all of these, you've gone one too far, just back up one. And you just want to be, you want to see the folder with all the folders in it, basically. Go ahead and select that folder. Under output template, check that and then scroll down until you find your character creator template. That's the one we put in that folder when we very first started. The file type, again, we can switch this over to PNG if we'd like. Uh, texture size, we can say, you know, 2048 is fine. And in fact, if you want to look at the output template, you just go over here to the output template, scroll down, or choose the character creator one here, and you can see how this is set up. But again, back here under settings, head only. It has a star by it because everything's being exported except for 1006. We want all these checked on. Global settings, we're looking at the folder that has the folders in it. Character creator output template, PNG 2048, export. And if we go and look at that folder, look at that. All our new textures have been populated in here. We're going to hop back into character creator. And we need to tell character creator, hey, go look in this folder and grab those new textures from my uh, updated assets. And in fact, I think since we updated just the body, I think you can just select base body. Uh, and then underneath Substance Painter, say Update Textures from Substance Painter. And in this one, we're going to go to the desktop where the folder is. And now instead of just looking at this folder, double click so you can see the folders in here. Say Select Folder. There we go. Uh, I think we can say OK on that. And now we have our updated ruddy red goblin character in Character Creator. So let's go ahead and have him move around a little bit. We'll say again, Male Walk. Looking good. If we want to change the lighting scenario, let's go ahead and pause this animation. Go to content, go to stage, Lightroom. There's some really cool options in here, like authority is a cool one. You can kind of put some really dramatic light on this guy. Blur warm, cinematic. Or if you want to just stick with the default CC4, you can just double click that. And that's basically it. If you want to hop back into Substance Painter, go back here and let's, you know, crank up that lightness on that skin a little bit. Go back in here to File, Export Textures. Go ahead and hit Export. Hop back into Character Creator. Again, make sure Body Selected, Substance Painter, Update Textures. You need to see the folders. And you can see how easy that is, all updated. Now, I am going to tell you a little bit about expression wrinkles. We're gonna di uh, do a little bit more of a deep dive when we get into face tools. That's where expression wrinkles are really awesome. Uh, but for now, let's go here to motion, pose, a pose. And in fact, let's do this. Let's do uh, motion, wrinkle check, dramatic male. And right now, if we play this, you're going to see he does have pretty deep wrinkles on his face, um, but no new wrinkles are showing up based on his skin, like how his face is moving. It's not adding more wrinkles, and we can add those. So let's, uh, with this character, so we'll go to CC3 Base Plus. We'll go to this tab right here, which is Expression Wrinkles. Let's say Activate Expression Wrinkles. This is loading a neutral generic expression wrinkle pack to his face. And let's turn on check with expressions. And in fact, just for the heck of it, let's just go one by one. So we'll say pose, a pose. We'll zoom in here. And as I click on these, now when his brow raises, I'm getting extra wrinkles in his brow. So I can say, I can change the overall influence. You can see this is the wrinkles he's adding. He's got pretty wrinkly skin, so it's not as dramatic as some characters may be working on, but it does add a little bit of extra life uh, to your character. So anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go with expression wrinkles on this particular character, but stay tuned. We have face tools coming up. There's going to be some really awesome things we can do with expression wrinkles. Oh, there is one more thing I want to talk about. Again, when we get into face tools, we'll talk more about uh, making your own custom eyes and your own custom teeth, but you can do that uh, in Character Creator in the content tab as kind of a, you know, just kind of hold you over and also to talk about how to update content. So. Uh, over here, if we click on actor, you see we have a bunch of options underneath here. You can also just go in here to the folders, but they got some ni really nice icons laid out. So if I want to change his eye color, I can go in here to the actor, choose the eye, and we can just double click this. 
Um, I'm not going to replace the entire eye ball. I'm just going to replace the material in this case. So now we have a new eye color. If you want to change it out to a blue, we can do that. You can change eyelashes. You can change nails. Again, you can go through and do more morphs if you'd like. You can even swap out these expression wrinkles. I, I know I said that we were done talking about them, but basically, you know, you can double, you can put in deep saggy or shallow varied wrinkles. Um, there's even stylized wrinkles, which won't work for this character. Scanned wrinkles from other characters. Uh, again, we'll get heavier into wrinkles in a bit. For the teeth here, let's actually go back to, um, yeah, let's do this. Let's go into the motion tab and say edit facial. Let's go back to the muscle tab. This is actually really cool. So in here, we can turn on like head turn and head tilt and uh, we can move the head around and kind of test it out. And you can also click here. So for example, we can click these eyebrows and you know what, we'll click the eyes too. So now we can move around the head and the eyebrows and his eyes will move around and his head will move around. Of course, if you want to turn off the head, just go ahead and unclick those. And now his eyebrows and his eyes will move or you can turn off the eyebrows and just swing his eyes around. So here's his eyes moving. Uh, you can double click to deselect everything and then now you can go in here and you can move these brows down or individually. You can say, I just want to move this one up and down. Jaw open. Go through here and move this and you can see his neck is tensing depending on where his jaw is in his face. And again, stay tuned for face tool stuff coming up. It gets so, so much cooler. Here's lip changes. Anyway, you get the idea. You can go through and pose his face. And in fact, there's even expressions in here. So if we double click uh, happy, here's happy and then all the way to D5 happy. And then we can go switch this to, uh, you know, sad. Here's a couple different sads in here. Let's go to angry, super angry, kind of angry. <laughs> so a bunch of different angry variations in here that are really cool. And while we're doing this, you see he has teeth in there. So we can go back to our content. Again, actor, here's the teeth icon. You can swap these out. We'll just say replace. And now he's got updated teeth. So we'll go in here to motion, pose, a pose. And you can also use morphs for uh, positioning of these uh, at attributes too. So you can see this eye is a little bit off. All you got to do is go in here to the morph tab. We'll go to here to head, eye, eyeball. Let's go ahead and turn off the search that we have in there. So now this is his left eye. So I can say eyeball move left and I can scoot this over a little bit. I can do eyeball height left and I can move it up just a tad. There we go. So now we've updated his eyeball placement just using morphs. There's a couple different ways to do that, but that's an easy one. So if you're happy with this, go ahead and, you know, file, save project as, we'll call this Goblin Demo, Goblin Demo 03 textured. Make sure we're synced up with our ZBrush file. So again, we'll go back to scene, select all these, go Z. We're going to relink, split out what we need to split out, current pose. There we go. We'll go to File, Save As, 03, Textured. And now at any point later down the road, we can open both these up, relink them, and we're good to go. In the next batch of videos, we're going to cover face tools and expression wrinkles like I've been promising this whole time. Uh, but even after that, we still got a naked character. So we'll cover clothing and accessories as well.